Yes. Yeah, uh, well, net profit at 3097. Uh, that's uh, looking a little just a tad under the weather. Uh, it's uh, 3097 compares to 3250. So, so that's a decline. About a 3 and a half percent. That's a 4.7% decline that the company has uh, delivered. It's missed our expectations by about 64, 65 odd crore. So 3097. On the top line, it's uh, 13,411 is what I read. So that is a growth of, uh, that's a degrowth of 2.8% yes. that the company has delivered. So and that too has missed our expectations by roughly 400 odd crores. So revenues and profits, and not the key parameters to look at, but are marginally lower than street expectations. We are awaiting the key important ones like dollar revenue and margins. Okay, but would not a fall in rupee revenue indicate that there could 2159 be a fall? is what I think the company is delivered in dollar revenue. No. Well, that is a big miss. So that is a lower than street expectations by $65 million. That's a significant amount. It's down 2.6% on a quarter and quarter basis. So if that's the dollar revenue, it's significantly lower than street expectations. Um, we were expecting dollar revenues to be flat. So um, this is looking like a bit of a miss. 344. Nine is what the company has reported in terms of EBIT. So that's those are margins of 25.7%. That's largely in line with street expectations. But again, um, Infi would be the fourth you know, IT company in a row to disappoint in terms of growth. So focus on the dollar revenue. It's suggesting a degrowth of 2.66% at $2159 million, falling short of our expectations by um, $65 million. So this is not looking good. I think the stock is reacting, Lata. It's down a percent and a half now. Moshe Katri was telling us that 40 cents would do, but he's got 44 cents earnings per share. Uh, well, anyway, uh, the, Nilesh, first thoughts? Well, I don't think I would read too much into these numbers. They're probably a tad below uh, yeah. expectations. But clearly, I think what one needs to really focus on is uh, what are they going to talk about FY16? What is the outlook for FY16? I think that's going to be very, very important. By and large, Q4 has been weak for most IT companies. That's something which we have seen. It. So it's not an Infosys-specific phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It's something which has really happened with the industry. So to that extent, I don't think we should focus uh, a lot more on the Q4 numbers and the fact that they've missed it by you know, 2% or so. Mm -hmm. I clearly believe the but focus should be... But actually, it is a bit of a disappointment on all fronts. Uh, yeah, you might say that this is not... Okay, board approves a bonus issue in the ratio 1 is to 1. Uh, so that will be the immediate steroid. Didn't they already announce yeah, exactly. a bonus this issue? This is the second the, bonus issue. Yeah, yes, it was a, this was there. Yeah. already announced yes. a 1 is to 1 bonus yes. issue yeah. towards the end. They educate the investors that it doesn't make any difference. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, perhaps do. people will stop asking for bonus because you realize it's not going to make a material difference. Uh, well, uh, these are the initial numbers we have and they are uh, under street expectations across the board. Uh, the dollar revenue has come in at $2159 million. The street expectations was 2224 so So about 65 million dollars below street expectations. Rupee revenue came in at uh, 13,411. That's about 400 crores less than what the street was expecting, which was a little more than 3,800 crores. Acquisition. A bit, uh, okay. Acquisition of uh, They've uh, entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Calidus and its affiliate, a leading provider of digital experience solution, including mobile commerce and in-store shopping experiences to large retail clients for a consideration of $120 million. So that is 750 crore and it also includes a deferred component and a retention bonus. Right now the payout is a $120 million. It also includes a deferred component and retention bonus. Once again, Nilesh, uh, this acquisition seems in the company's focus area of you know digital, mobile commerce, etc. We do not know the valuations, but your initial thought on this second acquisition in the span of three months? Yeah, well, strategically, it, it looks to be the, the most prudent thing to do. I mean, uh, directionally, this is the right thing to do. You'd, you probably don't have enough skill sets to kind of fully, uh, you know, serve your customers on digital transformation. Um, so acquisitions is probably the way forward. Uh, this is not something which is very huge. I mean, I think $120 million acquisition is really yeah. not very big it, for it, Infosys. Mm. Uh, it just got the revenues, uh, uh, geographical uh, revenues as well. Uh, you may want to look at that. Uh, North American revenues have come in at 62.8%. Uh, European revenues at 23%. Indian revenues at 2.5%. And the rest of the world at 11.6%. Uh, uh, Rima, you may want to, uh, the BFSI component contribution is 33.6%. That's a little more than the 23.1% last quarter. Uh, manufacturing is 23.8 versus 23.4. 
Retail has remained unchanged at 23.5. Energy utilities have fallen. Understandably, energy has been everyone's bugbear. That's fallen to 19.1 from 20. So those are uh, the main. I think we've got something on clients. Uh, number of active clients added during the period is 950. 950 active clients added during the period is 52 compared to 59 in the previous quarter. So number of clients added lower. $1 million plus clients uh, is uh, at uh, 529 okay. compared to 532. So there has been a fall in the number of uh, $1 million. $5 million plus clients uh, is 244 compared to 240. So $5 million clients increase. $10 million plus are 159. So five clients more than the previous. Uh, okay, at least I, I guess the biggest one, uh, 200 million dollar remain at four. 100 million dollar clients, one. one more, 15 against 14. And uh, 75 million dollar clients remain the same. The others have remained the same. It's actually 200, uh, 100 million dollar, that's one more. And as you go lower, perhaps there is a little bit of a disappointment in terms of, uh, but active some clients more, have increased. Yeah, uh, some more details. Uh, volume growth this quarter has come in at 0.9%. This includes on-site, which is degrown by 2.1%, and offshore, which has gone up by 0.4%. So a volume growth at 0.9% is a bit disappointing. Uh, remember, TCS had delivered a volume growth of 1.4%. So this quarter is not turning out to be a good one. But focus on that. F516 revenue is likely to grow in a range of 10 to 12% in constant in currency terms. This is in line with street expectation. Actually, towards the upper end of what the street was hoping for, no one thought that they would guide for anything more than this. So this is actually the best case of what we could expect to hear from Infosys, 10 to 12 percent, which means it falls short of the NASCOM guidance of uh, 12 to 14 percent by 200 basis points. So I think, uh, Nilesh, take the floor. This is what you want to say about? Yeah, I clearly believe, I mean, this is, this is really what the street was hoping for, expecting for, that when do they get back into a double-digit earnings growth. Uh, so I think 10 to 12 percent, I think that's a reasonably benign outlook to give as far as Infosys is concerned. Uh, this is essentially what the street wanted. Okay. And I think this bodes well, this augurs well for the stock. The key issue is that will they meet this guidance? You know, I mean, there should not be misses. It's also constant currency. There are a couple of variables out there. But I think if you really kind of set that aside, I think 10 to 12 percent, Earning uh, revenue growth outlook in constant currency, I think, is basically a good guidance. Okay, I think some attrition numbers have come. Gross employee additions over the year uh, is over 50,000 for the year. Utilization expands 450 basis points for the year, that is. And quarterly annualized attrition declines to 13.4 for emphasis. Uh, no, I think uh, just focus on the attrition on an LTM basis. I'm still okay. to uh, calculate the quarterly annualized attrition. I'm not too sure about that number, but what we have from the fact sheet is that uh, on an LTM basis, it's at 18.9% versus 20.4% quarter on quarter. Suffice to say, attrition has come down and that is a big positive. The other big positive is the net addition to the employees because that's a sign that the company is investing and they see that much <coughs> revenue visibility. The net addition in the quarter is at 6,549 employees, much like 2,300 uh, employees more than what they did in the previous quarter. And even in the last quarter, we were rewarding, we were applauding the fact that, you know, there were 4,000 plus additions, uh, you know, for two consecutive quarters by Infosys, something we've not seen in the prior quarters. So this would be the third consecutive quarter, very strong employee addition, and much better than the prior two quarters. So, uh, you know, on all the internal parameters, Infosys, we say, is a, you know, a story which is work in progress. It's a recovery story. So if you track the internal parameters like attrition, employee addition, things are looking good. It's only uh, the Q4 numbers which are a bit subdued. Whether you look at it in volume growth of 0.9%, the constant currency, it's degrowth by, uh, you know, minus, it's degrown by 0.4%. Yes. So a Q4, Q4 on the whole is a bit subdued, though the internals are looking good, but F516 looks promising. Okay, uh, revenues, the uh, guidance is, uh, rupee revenues, uh, okay, constant currency terms 10 to 12%, and in dollar terms, uh, it's 6.2 to 8.2%. Uh, that's uh, uh, the revenue outlook. Uh, anything more you wanted to add, attrition lower, is that uh, uh, a matter of joy? Well, they seem to be on a path of recovery. You know, clearly the kind of low that they had witnessed a few quarters back on all fronts, uh, at least that seems to be a thing of the past. Uh, on operating parameters, they are getting better. Uh, 
the guidance that they've at least given in constant currency is relatively healthy. Uh, so I clearly believe that it looks like that the, there are going to be better days as far as the company is uh, concerned. They are also getting a little more aspirational, a little more ambitious by going ahead and doing acquisitions uh, at higher frequency. Uh, you know, so I think these are some of the positive things uh, which are really uh, happening for the company. It's now just that they have to deliver on this guidance. I mean, you know, I just hope that there aren't any misses in terms of the guidance. Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, we have uh, Trip Chaudhary of Global Equities also patiently waiting by. Uh, he's joining us on the phone line from San Francisco, has stayed up uh, or uh, got up early for these numbers. Trip, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, uh, you got the initial numbers. Uh, the revenue is uh, a shade short of the $2.2 billion. $2.159 billion is what they have done in terms of revenue. And uh, the profit stands at 3097 crore rupees. Uh, that's down about four and a half percent. The uh, guidance in constant currency terms is 10 to 12 percent. Uh, definitely better than what they promised and delivered in the current year. Your first thoughts? Trip, can you hear me? All right, I think we will get back to Trip in a minute. Maybe recheck that line. Uh, well, uh, the uh, uh, current numbers, the numbers for the quarter gone by have been a little soft, but uh, the company has shown a lot of intangible qualities which uh, make for perhaps a recovering story as uh, uh, Nilesh has been highlighting the fact that uh, they have been employing more and I think the number of clients as well is only a shade lower. There doesn't seem to be anything in, uh, negative in terms of client acquisition and uh, clearly the co uh, company is uh, positive enough to uh, promise a double digit growth so 10 to 12 percent uh, again guidance below NASCOM we've been saying that but above their own uh, historical performance. Uh, at this point in time, the stock is down just about 1%. Uh, okay, so for once, it's not reacting very, there are no wild gyrations after uh, the announcement of the numbers. Uh, uh, any thoughts? I think uh, the stock will, at the moment, not need to sh uh, react much to the numbers? Yeah, I probably think it will kind of be relatively stable. Uh, I think post the earnings call which they are hosting today and post the media and the press interactions, I probably think that tomorrow would be a more relevant day to watch out in terms of how the stock behaves because post the earnings call today, uh, I think the street and the analysts will have a better handle in terms of what precisely this growth uh, translates into in terms of earnings growth and what their outlook is, not just for one year but maybe for the next couple of years. Uh, so I clearly believe that tomorrow is probably a more important day, uh, you know, the next uh, trading day is going to be far more important than what's going to happen in the next one. But for the moment, you feel the numbers are uh, uh, stably priced. Yeah, I clearly there believe. There is no need for a wild gyration. Absolutely, because I think the Q4 numbers, I think to some extent, were not very relevant. Uh, they were probably the last thing that the street was focused on. It was more about what's the guidance for next year. Uh, and, and that's and come at the upper end of expectations. And that's come in line at least with expectations. They're at least saying this is the basic that we had needed. There is some improvement on some of the operating parameters so that's again a positive sign you seeing the new management go out and be more ag aggressive in terms of acquisition so I think on the whole overall I think it looks to be reasonably kind of a stable set of uh, numbers and outlook okay. uh, what is going to be important is now what view the street takes from a one to two year perspective in terms of growth after the management speak right. I exactly. assume well Sandeep Agarwal of Edelweiss financial services is also with us Sandeep uh, you heard the numbers and you heard what Nilesh had to say what are your thoughts about the numbers would you be worried about the miss on several fronts Yes, so the quarterly numbers obviously are below estimate. Uh, we were expecting at, at least flattish to half percent kind of growth uh, uh, in the num in, in the do in dollar terms, implying you know two and half percent kind of growth in constant currency. But you know uh, the numbers have came at 2.7 percent kind of decline in dollar terms. So it is below our estimate, obviously, and even PAT and margins are also below. But the good thing is that you know uh, <coughs> the key metrics is if you see for instance to start with guidance I think guidance is slightly higher than what we were expecting uh, in fact we were expecting 7 to 9 in, term, in dollar terms and uh, this looks like slightly higher than that maybe 7.5 to 
nine and a half, assuming that you know there would be 250 basis point yeah. kind of impact of cross currency. Uh, other thing to note is, if I have seen, I have limited time to see all the numbers, but you know, okay. uh, the attrition number was, looks like 13.4%. I think mm -hmm. that is a very, very important and good number to look at it. It is really, really very uh, uh, right metric to yeah. see because, you know, this company has been suffering from very high attrition okay. for the past several quarters. Sandeep, so that is another good number. Yeah. Sandeep, we'll come back to you in just a minute because Trip Chaudhary is on the line from San Francisco and we've made him wait a bit. Uh, Trip We've got Trip Chaudhary of Global Equities Research joining us on the phone line from San Francisco. Uh, Trip, sorry to disturb your sleep, but I do know you were listening in to that Infosys uh, analyst conference call. What would you say stood out for you the most? Do you believe that uh, from here on uh, the better times are to come for Infosys and therefore would, that, would your outlook on the stock change? I think, you know, the, the industry is in a downturn and like every industry has its good times and it's bad times and I think we are going through the through that uh, typical cycle here I don't think it there is any reason for investors to be optimistic about the IT sector for at least another 12 months or maybe two years because as in the conference call Vishal mentioned that uh, things are need to be changed big time because industry is going through a very massive shift and somehow almost every Indian IT services company hasn't reacted uh, proactively to the shift. So I think this is a secular downward trend, but, uh, and, and we have to live through it. So what do you do with IT stocks at this point in time, Trip? I think there's a fundamental problem in the way the various executives are also, you know, talking. Like it is, it is not prudent, uh, for example, of the Ghani Infosys conference call. You cannot run the company basically by slogan shouting. It's okay to be a politician, but if you are an executive, you have to talk only on two fronts. Is your focus to gain market share or is your focus to gain, to, to, to improve your profitability? You cannot do the both things. And if you look at the conference call, to me it looked like a complete confused company. And it's not only Infosys, almost every Indian IT services company is looking like a, like a dumb company because when things are good, an idiot looks like a genius. And when the things do ba look bad and things turn bad, these guys are totally clueless. So the only suggestion I have is it is very important for to think not in terms of companies or stock. India is going through a very critical uh, phase. And I think what needs to happen is we need to make sure Indian companies are focused on market share and land grab and they should do away of thinking in terms of profitability because that is very important. If that doesn't happen, we could see 50, 60 percent layoffs in this whole IT services industry and that would be a serious economical headwind to the country as a whole. And these companies are unable to understand the gravity of the situation. Uh, they are trying to focus on profitability and quarter-to-quarter -quarter stock movements, and that is the reason none of the Indian IT services companies are able to reinvent themselves. All right, Trip, you do sound extremely disappointed in the sector and especially from what you heard of, uh, from Infosys today. But we'll leave it there. I know it's a late hour for you, so we appreciate you joining us at this late hour.